All right, how's everybody doing today? Welcome back to another video, everyone. And today, in this video, what I have for everyone is my full camera video for the LG V60. So welcome to the full camera walkthrough, including all the photo and the video samples that I captured with the LG V60. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now starting off, I'm going to walk everyone through the ways that you can launch the cameras on your LG V60. But first things first, let me show y'all where to go to access the camera launching settings. So the first thing you want to do is jump into the settings on your device. Okay. Then you want to go down to where it says extensions. Then you want to go down to where it says shortcuts. And this is where you can control a variety of different shortcuts or quick press options for your LG V60. Now, in particular for the LG V60, we have uh, two distinctive camera launching shortcuts. One is kind of like an Android staple at this point, and the other is like an LG staple, and it's been there since probably the LG G3. So the first one you're going to see at the top is the quick launch power button gesture. So quickly pressing the power button two times will launch you into the cameras, and or... Now you're going to see the LG gesture, so quickly double pressing the volume down button will launch you into the cameras as well. So if you look up on the screen, you're going to see the shortcut that I like to use the most, which is quickly double pressing the power button, and that will take you directly into your main camera interface. But you play around with both of these settings, and you choose the setting that works best for you. So some of us like quickly double pressing the power button. Some of us find it easier to quickly double press the volume down key. It's completely up to you. Okay? Other than that, the other ways that you launch into the cameras are pretty much standard. From any screen, um, my bad, from the lock screen on your device, you just swipe up on or swipe in on the camera icon to also drop you into the main camera interface. And last but certainly not least, um, just tap on the camera icon, um, no matter where it is, on any of your home screens or your app drawer to take you into the main camera interface here. All right, as you can see right here. And let's jump to the rear facing camera so we can run through these settings. Now, <clears throat> first things first, we're gonna run through all of the settings from top to bottom, left to right, all right? So starting off, you're gonna see in the upper left-hand corner, we got a gear icon. That gear icon will take you into the sub settings for your cameras. Now, the sub settings are different for photos and videos. So depending on what you're trying to do, you may wanna jump into a different sub setting. Now to switch the modes for your cameras, to switch between photo and video, you just swipe between the modes, as you can see. So, and I fully customize this. You can fully customize the swipe modes by swiping all the way to the right. And then you see there's a more section here. And then if you click on the editing pencil, you can drag and drop. So you press and hold, and you drag around where you want the different modes to be. So you can customize the swipe through mode settings here on the LG V60. Once you have it set up the way you want, click the checkbox, and you're good to go. So that's how you would rearrange the modes. Just wanted to cover that one first. And then this is how you would swipe through the mode. So you just swipe left and right to swipe through any particular mode that you would want. So starting to cover the general photo modes first. So tapping on the gear icon in the upper left hand corner here will take you into the sub settings for the primary 64 megapixel camera. So you can see when you out of the box, it comes set to 16 megapixel mode. And in that 16 megapixel mode, you have your um, scene optimizer. You got your uh, quick shot action. You got your composition gestures. You got your 
tips for creating photos or videos because it's the same settings for photo mode as in video mode it just looks a little bit differently then you have your photo size so here you can see all of the photo sizes for the LG V60 cameras so it is indeed a 64 megapixel main camera sensor and then we have HDR and again you can control it on off auto then we have the new HEIF um, file compression just to make files uh, take up less space on your device okay then we have a live photo mode we got we have object tracking continuous autofocus and tap to focus on your LG V60 along with live photo mode so you can take those action photos or live photos all right then we got our grid controls now in particular with the grid controls you only have one setup you got the 3 by 3 ratio here that's it so there's no 4 by 4 there's no square there you just have the 3 by 3 grid all right then we have our voice shutter options so if you toggle this on you say any one of those key phrases and it will take a photo or start a video depending on the mode that you're in then we got this signature photo so you can add your signature to the photos like a nice little timestamp so this way people know who took the photo you can also add uh, which photo took the photo which device took the photo my mistake just by adding it to that signature there then we have the location metadata, which I always recommend you turn off. That's why that toggle is turned off. Okay. Then we got our storage location. Now, by default, it goes to the internal storage. But if you install the micro SD card, you can send all your photos and videos directly to the SD card. All right. So there's your storage options. And that pretty much does it for the settings on the primary camera. Okay, so let me show y'all a few other things here. Now, directly next to the gear setting icon, we got a quick shortcut button to get you through all of your aspect ratios and all of your camera sizes. So you can see inside of this quick uh, shortcut option, we do have the quick shortcut to take us into using the 64 megapixel mode which is in 4x3 by default. A lot of the LG V60 cameras, uh, to take full advantage, you got to use the 4x3 aspect ratio. All right? Then, directly next to that, we have our live filters. So you tap on this, and then you can turn on your live filters. And then certain filters give you the, the ability to adjust the effect in real time. So you can see below it, you have a slider to adjust set effect so that's really cool and if you want to do filter photo or video that's where you would do that now turn that off then we got our flash controls which is pretty much self-explanatory on off auto I like to shoot a lot of my content whether it be photo or video with it off so you can see mine is turned off out of the box it comes on auto by default and then in the far right hand upper corner, we got our timer. All right. So we got three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. And in my opinion, three or five seconds is perfect. I prefer five seconds, but you play around with it. You find what works best for you. Okay. Then just below that, we got our main composition window here. With the grid lines, I like keeping the grid lines turned on because it helps me compose my shot. Then just below that, to the left, we have the uh, AI Scene Optimizer. Now it's on, but if you want to turn it off, you just tap the square. It's going to pulse, and then the AI Scene Optimizer is off. Turn it back on, you tap the square again, it pulses, and it's back on. Directly next to that, we got a quick shortcut to switch between our ultra wide and our primary 64 megapixel camera so right now it's in 64 megapixel mode but if I tap on it now we're using the 13 megapixel ultra wide camera so now let's quickly run through some settings and verification on the ultra wide camera so in particularly for photos if we jump in here you can see we got all the same settings 
as the primary 64 megapixel camera. If we go down to photo size, you can indeed see this is a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera sensor. All right just for verification purposes. But pretty much all the other stuff are exactly the same. So we got our aspect ratio shortcuts here. Okay. Filters, flash, timer, so on and so forth. Okay. Now the other rear camera on the back of the V60 is a 0.3 megapixel TOF sensor or time of flight sensor. And that handles focus and depth information. So you can't readily access that camera. That camera is always being accessed. Okay? Just wanted to show y'all that. Now, another thing I wanted to show everyone is if you switch to the back to the primary camera and you go back in and you set it to the 16 megapixel mode by default, now when you click the shortcut slider button, it will also add a two uh, megapixel zoom before switching to the ultra wide camera. So you can see by default we're set to uh, one time zoom, but if I tap it, now we go directly up to two time zoom, and then we go out to the ultra wide 13 megapixel camera. So if you shoot in 16 megapixel mode, it does add a two time zoom shortcut to the quick shortcut toggle here. But I would actually recommend that you turn it to 64 megapixel mode and just shoot all of your photos in 64 megapixel mode and that also will give you the quick option to jump to the ultra wide camera from here now all of my photos and our videos was set to the modes that the device came on by default so it was set to 16 megapixel mode by default and that's what i shot a lot of the primary photos in and i primarily use the 16 megapixel mode and the primary 13 megapixel mode for the ultra wide camera and that's what y'all are going to see with the photo samples but i just wanted to show y'all that here and make my recommendation okay now let's keep it going directly next to that shortcut in the on the right you have a google lens shortcut here will take which will access all the google lens features so object recognition text net recognition homework recognition, formula recognition, shopping, translation, you name it. That's all right there. Let's tap the X to get out of that. Then directly below the quick shortcuts there, we have a shutter button, depending on what mode we're in. This is a shutter button or a video record button. And then to the left of that, we got a quick shortcut to get into our gallery. And then to the right of that, we got a quick shortcut to get to our front-facing camera. Now, the front-facing camera is a 10 megapixel sensor. Okay, and let's do some verification here. So jumping in, you can see it's a 10 megapixel sensor, maxing out in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Okay, and just for verification purposes, let me jump into the sub-settings. And you can see... It has all the settings as the primary and the ultra wide cameras with two additional settings the flip setting and the selfie distortion correction setting. But you can verify here that it is a 10 megapixel camera. Okay. And also, I'm going to cover this now because I don't want to come back. Let's jump over to video. Okay. So if you jump over to video with the front-facing camera, you can see that the front-facing camera maxes out at 4K 60fps right here. Now, in terms of the video recording here and the video samples, you guys are going to see 1080p 60 and you're going to see 4K, okay? I'm trying to make this uh, video as information-packed, but as short as possible okay and the video will be time stamped for everyone's convenience so please feel free to jump around to different parts of the video that you would like to know more about okay so i just wanted to cover that well, on the front facing camera maxes out at 4k 60 fps all right good now let's jump into the video settings for the primary and the ultra wide cameras now the primary camera in terms of video maxes out at a recording of 8K 30 FPS. And then if we switch to the ultra wide camera here, the
the ultra wide camera maxes out at 4K 30 FPS. Now, just because I want to keep everything as even and concise as possible, the maximum video resolution y'all are going to see in this video is going to be 4K 30 FPS. Now, my video editor does max out at uh, outputting video or exporting video at 4K 60 FPS, but being as the ultra wide camera only goes up to 4K 30 FPS, I just thought it. It's nice and convenient and concise to keep everything at the same resolution. So this whole video will be exported in 4K at 30 FPS. All right? Good. So that goes over your main uh, video resolutions there. And now this is the quick shortcut to it. You can also jump into the gear settings here and get into the more detailed version of it. So if I go into video resolutions here, you can see the ultra wide maxes out at 4K 30 FPS in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Okay, and if I jump back to the primary camera, we can also see again if we go into the settings and go to video resolution 8K 30 FPS. 1080p 60, 1080p 30, 720p, you name it, okay? Right there, just to show y'all that. Okay, and then now let's quickly run through all of our additional modes. Now, the LG V60 cameras do have a super steady mode, but when you turn on super steady mode, it locks the focus to a fixed focus. To a fixed focus aspect and it limits the recording resolution to either 720p or 1080p 30. Now I will not be using super steady mode in the video uh, clip demonstrations but I just wanted to show y'all that and let y'all know that information. Okay let's keep it going now. Now let's go ahead and run through the modes. Now a neat thing about the V60 is it also gives you granular microphone control, okay? Now, in auto mode, you have three different microphone mode presets. You have basic mode. You have ASMR mode for your quiet or stealthy videos. My bad, y'all. Then we have um, <clears throat> voice bokeh mode, all right? So that's there as well. And this is in your default auto mode. All right. Now, moving on, jumping out of that. Now, if you get into manual video, you can control everything. Okay. You got manual controls over. My bad. Didn't mean to hit that. Let's move this up out of the way a little bit. You got manual controls over your microphones. And you got manual controls over the full spectrum of the video. So focus, exposure, white balance, you name it, shutter speed, all those controls are here and including microphone controls. Now, you also get more control if you plug in an external microphone. So not only can you control the onboard microphones in pro mode, but you can control the external microphones in pro mode as well. And you do get a live feed of the audio when you're using pro mode video. So it's really, really nice in my opinion. And it does tell you the resolution that you're recording the video at and the megabits per second that the video takes up if you use pro mode for video on the V60. So that's really nice. Okay, so let's jump out of that here. Now moving on, we also have a night mode and you can control the intensity of it using the slider down below. Then we have our general photo mode which we already went through. Then we have our portrait mode, which comes with a variety of different portrait mode effects. Okay, so you can see here, we got a variety of different portrait mode effects here that you can go through at your leisure and just use the best one that you feel works for you. Then we got slow motion video here. Now in terms of the LG V60, I will not be doing any slow motion video in this video because I found that a lot of people don't really like the slow motion video, but it is here and I do want to cover it. So it maxes out at 1080p, 240 frames per second slow motion video here on the LG V60. Okay, so good stuff there. 
Then we have a full dedicated pro mode for photo mode. Okay. And then we got our more options here. And I did already show everyone that this is fully customizable from the more options setting here. So we also have uh, live YouTube video mode, ASMR mode, sticker mode, time lapse, and panorama. Okay. And this pretty much goes through all of your main modes for your LG V60 cameras. Now, let me give y'all my opinions real quick before we jump into the photo and the video samples. Now, in terms of the LG V60 cameras, I'm probably going to reiterate this again at the end of the video, but LG did a great job with these cameras. Where I feel like they definitely need some improvement is the color science of their cameras, okay? And y'all are going to be able to see what I'm talking about in the video as well as in the photo performance. Now, I found the, the color science for the LG cameras is not the best, and it's not, not as uniform as it should be going from the primary to the ultra-wide, all right? So that's where I feel LG needs the most improvement, and it's really evident in low-light video or low-light photos, all right? So those are my two cents as to how I feel about the cameras and what LG can improve. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the photo samples and then directly after it, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the video samples and then we're going to bring this video to a close. So I hope everyone enjoys it. Don't forget it is timestamp for your convenience and I will see everyone in the next video. Have a good one everybody. We are out of here. Peace. everyone so now we're going to officially start on the camera testing for the front and rear facing cameras on the LG V60 so we're out here today 
and we're going to begin the camera testing. So we're going to run through all of our usual tests. This video is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So we're going to run through a bunch of different tests here. Let's start off with the pans. So we're going to pan all the way from here, all the way through to right about here. And we're going to do it three times. And this is with the ultra wide camera, all right? So we're going to do one with the ultra wide camera, and then we're going to do the last two with the primary camera, and we're going to do that for each test. So let's get started now. Here we go with number one. So we're going to pan from here all the way through to right there, and come on back. That's one. And now let's go to the primary, and here we go. All right, so that was the pan test. Now let's go ahead and do, <clears throat> let's do the exposure testing. So now we're gonna pan down to the ground and up and out to the tree there. And we're gonna do this three times as well. Again, the first time is gonna be with the ultra wide and the last two times is gonna be with the primary. So here we go. So we should be locked up on the tree and let's pan down. Now we're down to the ground, and let's pan back up and out. Boom, that's one. Let's switch back to the primary. Boom, and here we go with the other two. Down to the ground. Back up to the tree, two. Down to the ground. Back up to the tree, three, all right? And remember, what we're looking for when we test out the exposure is we want a nice smooth transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas with minimal exposure blowout. And if the cameras do blow out, we want them to recover as quickly and as evenly as possible. All right? So let me know what you think. That's what the exposure testing tests for. And the pan testing test this stabilization. All right? So the first test was a stabilization test. The second test was an exposure test. And now the third test is going to be a focusing test. So now let's go back out to the ultra wide. Boom. And let's test out the focus. Now we're only going to do one of each for both cameras. So the first test is going to be a autofocus test because the V60 has autofocus, tactile focus, and object tracking autofocus. So we're going to test uh, one on the ultra wide and one on the primary and move on to the final test. All right, so starting off here, let's test out the autofocus. So we're going to use the bushes off to my left. We're going to use the big tree in the center there. And then we're going to use this pillar off to my right. And I want y'all to let me know how good you think the cameras is doing with the autofocus. So here we go. Let's get started. Bush to my left. Okay. Tree to the center, okay, and pillar to the right, okay. All right, let's come back over, switch to the primary, and now we're going to test out the tap to focus. So bush to my left, tap, locked up, almost instantly, and the real neat thing is when you tap, you get a white circle, and when focus is locked, you get a green pulsing circle to indicate that the focus is locked. And it was really, really quick, in my opinion, almost instant. So how was the focusing speed there? Coming over to the tree in the center, tap, locked up. Again, almost instant. And the real neat thing is we do have exposure controls as well. So if I tap and lock on the bush, if I go down, we can underexpose. If I swipe down, if I go up, we can overexpose. And then if I want to, I can lock it in on what I think is the perfect exposure. So right about there is perfect, and now the exposure is locked. And then if I want to go back to auto, um, go back to auto exposure and tap to focus, I just tap anywhere on the screen, and then it goes back to auto exposure. So how y'all, how y'all feel the focusing speed was there with the tap to focus? One more time, pillar off to my right, tap, and it's locked up. Really good stuff there. 
Really good stuff indeed. All right? So, last but certainly not least, let's now get into the Zoom testing. Now, the Zoom testing is important because it tests pretty much everything that we tested all in this video. So, it tests the stabilization, it tests the exposure, it tests the detail retention, all that good stuff. All right? So, let's go and start with the ultra wide. So, here we are on the ultra wide. And this is with no zoom, all right? And then we're going to go up to one time zoom. And now we're on the primary. And then next, let's go up to two time zoom. So it's two time zoom, all right? And now let's see how far it can go. So let's go up to three time zoom now. That's three time zoom, all right? What do y'all feel about the stabilization, the detail retention? Let me know. Let's keep going now. Four times zoom. Four times zoom right there. And you can see after a certain point, the colors kind of wash out. Um, the detail gets kind of blotchy. So in my opinion, if you're going to zoom in with the V60, I would say stop it about uh, 1.5 times with the main camera. Okay? But let's keep going. Let's see what the maximum zoom is here. So that's four times. That's six times. It's eight times, it's nine times, ten times zoom here. So let's find something to focus on far away. Ten times zoom here. All right, check that out. Now again, y'all can see there's a noticeable loss in detail. And honestly, I would never recommend you zoom in this far. If you need to get close to your subject, after a certain point, again, after 1.5 times zoom, you need to just physically get as close to your subject as you feel you need. So let me demonstrate 1.5 times zoom here for y'all. So 1.5 times. Check that out. See, the stabilization is good. The colors is good. The exposure is good. This is why I have no problem recommending this. All right? Okay. So this brings to a close the rear facing camera test for the ultra wide and primary cameras. Again, it's a primary 64 megapixel sensor and a secondary 13 megapixel ultra wide with a 0.3 megapixel time of flight sensor for depth information and focusing speeds. So now let's go ahead and test out the front facing cameras and I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. And now we're testing out the front facing 10 megapixel camera on the LG V60. And this is also being recorded in 1080p, 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So let me know what y'all think of this. How's the detail retention? How's the textures of my skin? How's the focus? How's the stabilization? How's the focus in compared to me in the foreground? versus the windows and the textures of the house in the background. How's the exposure? Let me know down below. And most importantly, how's the audio? <laughs> All right, so real quick front facing camera test here. Actually looks pretty good in my opinion based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, it is cold as a mug out here. So let me run inside now, and we're going to do some indoor daytime low light testing. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. So now we're testing out the front and the rear facing cameras of the LG V60 indoors daytime low light. And starting off the indoor testing, we just got a real quick vlog style stationary test with the front facing cameras and this is in 1080p 60 fps with no external microphone hooked up so as always let me know what you think of the overall audio the overall video quality the overall stabilization the detail retention the focus the exposure let me know all that good stuff down below y'all know how the story goes so real quick front facing camera test here in 1080p, 60 FPS. Now let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and redo the same testing with the rear facing ultra wide and primary cameras. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. So now we're testing out the rear facing primary and ultra wide cameras 
in the same indoor low light lighting scenario here. So let me just do some quick verification for y'all and then we'll get into the testing. So if I pan over, y'all can see the only thing we have lighting up the scene here this evening or today, it's not nighttime yet, is the light coming in through the window here. So this is indeed indoor daytime low light testing, all right? Just wanted to verify that. And yes, I know, I see the boxes stacking up high in the background there. I gotta actually go break those down and throw them in the trash. I know, I know. All right, but anyways, let's rest this down now. Let's angle this down and let's get into some testing here. Let's go. So that looks about straight. And now let's angle it all down. Yep, and that looks good. That looks perfect. Let me back up just a little bit. Boom. And this is uh, what the rear-facing primary cameras look like, okay? So this is the 64-megapixel primary camera on the LG V60. What do you think? What do you think? Now, this doesn't look bad. I would just want to throw on a little bit more light because you can see in this lower lighting scenario, even though it's daytime, it's definitely struggling to pick up the detail. But the focusing still looks okay. So let's do some focusing testing here. Bring it in. Oh, yeah, definitely struggled there. Take it out. Lock back focus pretty quickly. So it's definitely struggling without adequate amounts of light. And let me just show you what the ultra wide cameras look like. So, and here's the ultra wide. And honestly, the ultra wide cameras look a little bit better, in my opinion, in this lower light scenario. Now it is overexposing in this corner here, but the overall image to me, at least to my eyes, looks a lot better than what the primaries can produce. So now what I want to do is I'm just gonna punch back into the primary and we're just gonna throw a little bit of light on the scene and y'all tell me if y'all notice a big difference. So we're gonna throw a little bit of light on just a touch, too much, perfect, perfect. So this is just with a little bit of light on, on the scene here. And as you can see, it makes a big difference in my opinion overall. So check this out. So now let's pick up the same two devices, have a look. Look at the detail that you can pick up from the text here now. Look how good that focusing is. That looks more than legible to me. Look at the textures that it's picking up. Look at that nice shallow depth of field it has in the background. Let's check the focusing speed. Take it out. Lock back on almost instantly. Bring it back in. Lock back up, no problems. Just looks beautiful. Beautiful. And check the text out. All right. And this dark camo blue is very hard for cameras to expose for and focus for. And this V60 does a great job with the right amount of lighting. So now let's switch focus subjects here. Let's do the S7 now. All right, again, check it out. Look at those nice, beautiful textures. Look at the nice pattern it picks up. Look at the focus. Again, check out that shallow depth of field. All right, let's take it out. See, it's struggling right there. Struggling, struggling. Looks like it needs a little bit of assistance this time. Let's help it out. And it locked back up on the desk. So it definitely is gonna struggle in lower light. But for the most part, if you have a good amount of lighting, it should do a great job. Let's bring the phone back in. And now it's struggling to lock up on the phone again. All right. So let's help it out again. And let's bring the phone back in. And look at that. Beautiful. All right, so real quick, indoor, daytime, low light testing with the cameras on the LG V60, all right? Now what we're gonna do is a little bit later on, we're gonna redo similar testing, nighttime artificial lighting, all right? So I'll be back with the next set of tests for you guys. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. And now we are back in. And this time we're testing out the front and the rear facing cameras on the LG V60. And this is indoors 
nighttime artificial lighting, and this is being recorded in 1080p 60fps with no external microphone hooked up. So please let me know what y'all think of the overall video quality as well as what you think of the overall audio down below. And starting off here, we just got a real quick front facing stationary camera sample here. Let me know what y'all think of this. So how's the detail? Okay. How's the exposure? How's the focus? Let me know down below. All right. Now real quickly, going to spin the cameras around and test out the rear facing cameras and we'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. So all I've done is spin the cameras around and now let's get into testing out the ultra wide 13 megapixel camera and the primary 64 megapixel camera on the LG V60. Again, this is in 1080p 60 FPS with no external audio hooked up. So real quickly, let's do some verification. So let me pick everything up, pan everything over. And you can see this is indeed indoors nighttime artificial lighting. So we got no light coming through the window here. Okay. And the only light we have lighting up the scene here is my overhead artificial room lights right there. And this is starting off the testing with the ultra wide camera here. All right. So I just wanted to do this for verification purposes. Now let's pan everything down and put it into the traditional reviewer style approach here. So right about there, let me level this off. Still a little bit unlevel. There we go. That looks about straight. And now let's pan everything down. Okay, yeah, so we're definitely not straight. All right. Now we're straight. All right, so what do y'all think? This is the ultra wide camera here. Check it out, check it out. And now let's punch into the primary. And y'all pay special attention to the difference. So now we're in the primary here. Y'all saw that? Let me show you again. Ultra wide, right here, primary, right there. Look at the big difference in the field of view. Again, ultra wide, right here, check it out. Primary, right here. Really good stuff there. Now let's just do some focus testing with the primary cameras in this lighting scenario. And then we're going to wrap the video up here. All right. So let's start off with the hardest one to emulate here in lower light. Let's do the blue camo on the uh, S6 Active here. Look at that. Even though the lighting is not the best, it's still doing a great job picking up the colors accurately and picking up the detail and the textures. Look at that nice fine texture it's picking up in the back of the device. Let's look at some text. Definitely struggling with the text in this lower light scenario. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, let's move on to something a little bit easier. Got the S7 active right here. Let's do this one. So check out the back. Oh, yeah. It definitely does a lot better with this brighter color. Look at the textures on that. Look at the nice shallow depth of field in the background as well. And that's all due naturally to the camera. I'm not using any blurred effects or anything like that. Look at how nicely it picks up the textured pattern. Let's check out the text on this one. Okay, definitely a lot better job picking up the text on this one. Look at that. That's more than readable right there. Really good stuff here. But again, this is a brighter color. It really struggles with the darker colors. Now let's check out the focusing speed, so let's take it out. Instantly locked up back on the S6 Active, bring it back in. A little bit of a struggle there, but locked up relatively quickly back on the S7 Active. Not bad, not bad at all. So a little bit of struggle 
in this lower light artificial lighting scenario, but much better than the daytime low light. All right. And you can see um, now some closing thoughts. It looks decent, but the color science and the the uh, um, the re-representation come through the viewfinder is not entirely white. Now it's making the table look like a washed out red, like almost a, a washed out brown. It's actually like a, a light oak red, so it's not quite doing the color to the table justice here, even in this lower light. And I would say that's probably one of my biggest issues with the LG device is the color science is not quite right. Other than that, I feel as though LG has done a pretty good job with these cameras. Okay, y'all. So that pretty much brings to a close the 1080p 60fps testing. Now, a little bit later on tomorrow, we're going to jump into the final set of tests, the 4K test, and then we're going to bring the video to a close. So I'll be right back with those last set of samples for everyone. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Alright everyone, and now we are back in, and we're going to go ahead and run through the final set of camera tests for the rear cameras and the front facing camera on the LG V60. So these next set of clips are going to be recorded in 4K at 30fps with no external microphone hooked up. So please, as always, let me know what you think of the overall video quality, the overall audio quality, the overall stabilization. All that good stuff. You know how the story go. Let me know down below. But without further ado, because we're not trying to make these clips take any time, let's, dri let's dive straight in. Now, starting off, we're going to do the pan testing. So we're going to pan all the way from here, all the way through to right about there. And come on back. We're going to do it one time with the ultra-wide and two times with the primary, and then we're going to move on to the next test. So here we go, starting off. And that's one. Let's go on back. Boom. And now let me switch to the primary. And let's do it two more times. So here we go. One, two, okay, now let's go ahead and do some exposure testing, let's again start with the ultra wide, so let's go out to the ultra wide here. And now we're going to pan up and down to the ground several times. And what we're looking for when we test the exposure is we want a nice even transition from the lighter areas of the scene to the darker areas of the scene with minimal exposure blowout. So as with the first test, we're going to do it one time with the ultra wide and two times with the primary. And we're going to use the big tree in the distance there as our focal subject. So here we go. We're set to the ultra wide camera and it looks like it's in focus. And let's paint it down to the ground now. Let's go. Okay. And let's go back up. Boom. All right. Now let me switch to the primary. Good. And let's do it two more times. So we're on the tree. Going down to the ground. Coming back up. One. Going down to the ground. Coming back up. Two. So let me know how'd it do. Okay? And then before we get into the last test, we're going to just do some focus testing here. So we're going to do it one time testing out the continuous autofocus and one time testing out the tap to focus. So we're going to use our three focal subjects. We're going to use this tree out in front right there. We're going to use the trailer off to my left, right there. And then we're going to use the back of the blue Jetta off to my right, right there. Okay? So starting off, and I want y'all to tell me how good you think the cameras did in auto mode and how good you think the cameras did in tap to focus. All right? So here we go. Starting off going to my right, or to my left, rather, my mistake. 
Now we're lined up on the trailer. How does that look? Okay. How's the focus on that? Let me know down below. Okay. Coming to the center. Lined up on the tree. How does that look? Now that looks pretty good through the viewfinder. But it's kind of hard for me to see. Because we are out here in super direct sunlight. So, you know, I have to reiterate my closing thoughts in the full review. But you guys leave your opinions down below in the comments. Keep it respectful, please. Let's keep going. Coming over to the Blue Jetta. How does that look? Okay. All right, coming back over to the center. Let me switch my grip. And now we're going to go ahead and use the tap to focus. So going to the left, tapping on the trailer, tap. Locked up. How was that? It was almost instant for me. Okay. But y'all let me know what you think. Coming back over to the tree in the center. Tap. Locked up. Again, almost instant. Coming over to the blue Jetta. Tap. Locked up. A little bit of a struggle there. But that that's the most shadowy area. So it's really hard for the cameras because you can see we got a combination of direct sunlight along with nice combinations of shadows. So it'll be kind of hard for the cameras to lock focus on that. But let me know. A little bit of a struggle is what I saw. All right. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Now, we're going to do the last set of tests now. We're going to do the zoom testing. So I don't know how well you can see it, but out there in the distance... There is a, uh, what is that? What is that? A uh, circuit box, an electronic box on a pole out there in the distance. We're going to use that as our zoom focus subject for this final zoom test. Now, the zoom test is important because it tests everything. It tests the focus, it tests the stabilization, and it tests the detail retention as you zoom in closer to the subject. And one thing that I want to reiterate, guys and gals, after a certain point, all the cameras on your smart device are doing is digitally cropping the image. So after a certain point, it will be really hard and you will lose a lot of detail. So the image will degrade. Now, if I'm making recommendations, I would say for the V60s, I would say you want to go with uh, 1.5 times zoom. So let me show you here real quickly. That's one time. And this is 1.5 times right here. That's actually perfect to me. This, I feel, provides the proper balance between focus, exposure, colors, and detail. All right? But that's just my recommendation. You guys and gals play around with the cameras and find out for yourself. But let's go back out to the ultra-wide now. And let's continue the zoom testing. So we're going to lock focus on that um, electronic box, uh, circuit breaker box. I forget what you call that. All right? But the focus is locked on it. And this is with the ultra wide camera set to 0.5 times zoom. All right. Let's go into the primary. So this is the primary at one time zoom. And let's go into two times zoom now. So this is the primary at two times zoom. All right. And let's keep going. Let's go up to four times zoom now. All right. So this is the primary at 4.3 times zoom. All right. Let's go up to six times zoom now. This is the primary at six times zoom. All right, and let's max it out. And then here it is, max 10 times zoom. And you can see it's really struggling at the max zoom range. That's because all it really did was digitally degrade the image. So again, I wouldn't recommend you use the maximum 10 times zoom, but here's just an example of what it looks like. Okay, let's go back out to normal. Okay, so now we're back out to the normal range. This is one time zoom on the primary 64 megapixel camera. And you know what? Let's go back out to the ultra wide. All right, so here we are. Now we're back out to the ultra wide. So this concludes the testing of the rear facing cameras on the LG V60. Now what I want to do for everyone is I want to spin the camera around and I want to give y'all one last camera test with the front facing camera front-facing 10 megapixel camera which will also be in 4k 30 fps all right so give me one second i will be right back all right everyone so now here's the final camera sample test for the front-facing 10 megapixel camera on the lg 
V60, and this is being recorded in 4K at 30 FPS. So let me know what y'all think. How is the front-facing cameras performing on the LG V60? And this is outdoors here today in direct light, okay? And it's kind of hard for me to see the viewfinder, even with my shades on. So hopefully this is coming out good. But let me know your thoughts down below. So, closing thoughts on this camera video. Are these some good cameras on the LG V60? I would have to say yes. Are they perfect cameras? I would have to say no. That being said, if you're willing to mess around and take your time to dial in using the pro modes, you can really get some great stuff out of these cameras. So they go from some really good cameras to some really great cameras if you're willing to mess around with the pro modes. That being said, because I know a lot of people uh, like the cameras on their smart devices, and some people buy their devices primarily based on the camera performance. So if we're going strictly based off of the camera performance, can I recommend these cameras? I would have to say yes, especially if you're looking for a flagship device and you're not trying to break the bank, but you really want an overall great experience, I can definitely recommend the LG V60 right here. All right, so this pretty much brings a close to the camera video for the LG V60. As always, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video. I hope everyone is staying safe out there. Happy holidays going out to everyone because it is Christmas time as of the recording of this video. So I hope everyone is having a happy holidays. I hope y'all aren't out there eating too much and gaining weight. Y'all know we got to hit the gym hard after the holiday season is over. I hope y'all are being safe, and I will catch everyone in the next video. Have a good one, everybody. We are out of here. Peace.